The biting yellow knife wind whipped at my face, carrying the faint scent of pine and something else. Something metallic and unsettling. Headlights from the last car on the Ingram Trail had vanished ten minutes ago, leaving me alone with the desolate landscape. My heart hammered a frantic rhythm against my ribs, a counterpoint to the rhythmic crunch of my boots on the frozen ground. Stupid, a voice inside my head nagged. You shouldn't have come, but the lure of the whispering pines had been too strong. Growing up in Yellowknife, I'd heard the stories whispered in hushed tones, tales of a forgotten stretch of forest where the wind carried voices and shadows danced with malice. Most dismissed them as campfire legends, but a part of me, a morbidly curious part, had always wondered. Tonight that morbid curiosity had gotten the best of me. Armed with a rickety flashlight and a backpack full of supplies, I'd ventured into the off-limits section of the trail, the one marked with a crudely painted skull and crossbones. Now, regret gnawed at me like a starving wolf. The pines, impossibly tall and skeletal, loomed over me. Their branches, devoid of needles, scraped the inky sky like skeletal fingers. The air grew thick, a heavy silence punctuated only by the eerie creak of a swaying branch. It was as though the forest itself held its breath, waiting. Then I heard it. A whisper soft as a sigh carried on the wind. It seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once, a wordless sound that sent shivers down my spine. My hand tightened on the flashlight, the beam cutting a weak path through the encroaching darkness. Hello? I called, my voice shaky. Nothing. Just the sigh-like whisper swirling around me. I took a tentative step forward, then another, drawn by an unseen force. The whispers intensified, forming a melody, a mournful song that clawed at my sanity. Images flashed through my mind, fragmented and fleeting. A young woman with eyes the color of the northern lights, a flash of violence, a crimson stain on the snow. Suddenly the forest floor vanished beneath my feet. I let out a startled yelp, plummeting into what felt like an endless abyss. The fall was broken by a sickening crunch of branches and then... Silence. Disoriented, I lay on my back, staring up at the canopy of pines. Pain shot through my ankle, a dull throbbing that threatened to consume me. My ankle, twisted at a grotesque angle, throbbed in protest with every heartbeat. Panic clawed at my throat. I was trapped, injured, and alone in the heart of the whispering pines. With a ragged sob, I fumbled for my phone, the screen an unwelcome beacon of darkness. No signal. Of course not. Tears stung my eyes, blurring the already dim view. I was going to die here, alone and forgotten, another victim of the whispering pines. A twig snapped behind me. My breath hitched, and I spun around, scrambling back until I hit a gnarled tree root. The flashlight beam cut a shaky circle in the darkness, revealing nothing but more trees and shadows. But the feeling of being watched persisted, a cold, prickling sensation on the back of my neck. Slowly, I lifted the flashlight, directing the beam towards the source of the sound. There, nestled beneath the roots of a towering pine, was a glint of silver. Curiosity tinged with a healthy dose of fear warred within me. Ignoring the searing pain in my ankle, I reached out and grabbed the object. It was a locket, cold to the touch and etched with an intricate design. Opening it with trembling fingers, I gasped. Inside, nestled on a bed of velvet, was a faded photograph. A young woman with eyes the color of the northern light smiled back at me, a familiar chill crawling up my spine. The woman from the visions. On the back, a single inscription. Annabelle, 1953. A wave of dizziness washed over me. The forest floor seemed to tilt, and the whispers grew louder, forming a distinct voice this time. A woman's voice filled with sorrow and anger. It spoke a name, my name, with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Sarah. The voice rasped, swirling around my head. Why, haven't... You come... Sooner? The forest floor began to rise, the gnarled roots beneath me twisting and writhing. Terror choked my scream. The gnarled roots beneath me, 
pulsating with an unnatural light, lifted me off the ground, twisting like serpents towards the towering pines. The locket, clutched so tightly in my hand, seemed to burn, its silver surface growing hot against my skin. The whispers, no longer mournful sighs, escalated into a furious cacophony. They coalesced into a single chilling voice, the voice from the locket photograph. Annabelle. You've come at last, Sarah. It echoed through the trees, the sound both ancient and young. But are you here to help, or simply another to claim? Panic clawed at my throat. Help! I don't... My voice choked on a sob as the roots coiled around my legs, their touch like ice and fire. Let me go! Help! The voice boomed, laced with bitter amusement. They never came to help. Not my father, not the townsfolk, no one. Left me here to die, alone in the cold. Images flooded my mind. A young woman, distraught and desperate, pleading with a group of men who aid her with suspicion. The image of a struggle, a flash of silver, and then darkness. Annabelle, I managed, my voice barely a squeak. Who are you? What do you want? A flicker of surprise, genuine or not, seemed to ripple through the whispering pines. You don't know. The voice softened, a tinge of sadness replacing the anger. I am the forgotten one. Annabelle, murdered here in these woods, left to become one with the forest. The pain in my ankle was a dull throb compared to the growing terror. Murdered? By my own father, Annabelle's voice confirmed. He feared the whispers, the visions I received. He thought me possessed. The fury returned, the whispers swirling into a storm. But the whispers were warnings, Sarah. Warnings of his greed, of the darkness he brought to this land. A horrible realization dawned on me. The stories, the legends of the Whispering Pines weren't just tales. This was a place of tragedy, a graveyard for the forgotten and the wronged. And Annabelle, trapped here by her own demise, sought not revenge, but release. I can help you. I croaked, the words leaving a bitter taste in my mouth. But how? The storm of whispers subsided, replaced by a cautious silence. The locket. Annabelle's voice finally spoke, softer now, almost pleading. It holds the truth. Show it to the world. Let them know my story. The darkness that festers beneath the surface. Understanding bloomed in my chest. This wasn't about vengeance. Annabelle sought peace, a chance for the truth to be known. The pain in my ankle was excruciating, but the urgency of her plea spurred me on. Okay, I rasped, ignoring the searing agony. I'll show it. But first you have to let me go. The silence stretched, thick with tension. Then the roots began to loosen their grip. Slowly, agonizingly, I was lowered back to the ground. The pain from my ankle was a dull roar, but I gritted my teeth, refusing to pass out. Thank you, I whispered, clutching the locket tightly. I won't forget you, Annabelle. The forest around me shimmered, the unnatural light fading. The whispers, once a terrifying cacophony, were now a faint sigh carried on the wind. Annabelle was gone, but her presence lingered, a heavy weight on my soul. With a deep breath, I fumbled for my phone, checking for a signal. One bar. Weak, but enough. Punching in 911, I waited, the dial tone a lifeline in the oppressive darkness. Help would come. The truth would be revealed, but a part of me knew, as I hung up and waited for the rescue team, that the Whispering Pines would hold their secrets close, and Annabelle's mournful whispers, forever seeking solace, would forever echo on the wind. The rescue was slow, hampered by the remote location and the worsening weather. By the time help arrived, the first rays of dawn were painting the sky a pale orange. As they loaded me onto the stretcher, my eyes scanned the forest, desperately searching for a sign of Annabelle, some acknowledgement of my promise. But there was nothing, just the silent pines swaying in the morning breeze. The recovery was long, my ankle, fractured in two places, required surgery. 
The locket thankfully remained unharmed. When I finally presented it to the local historian, Mrs. Abernathy, a gasp escaped her lips. Annabelle, she breathed, her eyes widening with recognition. They said she ran away. That shame drove her out. I told her everything about the whispers, the visions, and the chilling truth. Mrs. Abernathy listened with rapt attention, her face a mask of dawning horror. News of the locket and my story spread quickly through Yellowknife. An investigation was launched, the ground around the spot where I found the locket meticulously combed, and then a glint of silver, a shovel handle protruding from the frozen earth. The rest, as they say, is history. Annabelle's remains were exhumed, a hidden grave marked only by the skeletal remains of the very man who condemned her, her father. His greed, long buried, now lay bare alongside his victim. Yellowknife held a memorial service for Annabelle. The Whispering Pines, once a place of fear, became a solemn reminder of a dark secret unearthed. The whispers, some claimed, had quieted, replaced by a mournful silence. As for me, I returned to my life, forever changed by my encounter. The nightmares lingered, fragments of Annabelle's sorrow replaying in my dreams. But with them came a quiet sense of peace, the knowledge that I had helped a restless soul find solace. Sometimes, on a particularly still night, when the wind whispers through the trees, I think I can still hear a faint echo, a soft sigh carried on the breeze. A final thank you, perhaps, from the woman who found her voice in the silence of the whispering pines.